Once you've got your HTML skeleton complete, then you're ready to go ahead and start inserting content into the body tag. For this session, we're going to look at inserting text and formatting it in a very small way, uh, just a couple of paragraphs and, and uh, maybe some line breaks. Now to start, I would like to go ahead and create uh, a few sentences. So this is my first sentence. And here is another. And another. Now I'd like to go ahead and save this file to uh, my folder as index.html. Go ahead and save it to a, a folder that you're familiar with. And we need to look at it in a browser. So you can look at it in your favorite browser, whether it's Safari, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, uh, whatever it may be. I'm going to open mine up in Chrome. And here's the way that it outputs. This is my first sentence, and here is another, and another. It does put everything uh, that I typed in there in the body tag, but it didn't quite format it the way that I thought it would. It actually put all of this on one line. Now there's good news and bad news here. Uh, the good news is obviously there are ways to format this with, with code that will do. Um, HTML and browsers generally don't allow you to have more than one space. So if you want to organize yourself and you like three or four blank lines between each section, that's fine. Okay, you can do that and it doesn't affect the way your browser is interpreted at all. They really don't see more than one space. If you want more than one space, and obviously that's bad news because we can't do it this way. So the good news, bad news uh, of this situation is that you know, the browsers don't really see more than one space. That can be good or bad at the same time. Um, so in order for us to format this and make it look like it does here in our code, we're going to have to do a little bit more. And that's where we're going to learn our first new tag of the day, and that's called a line break. Every time you put a BR tag, it puts in a line break so that the, the text will go down to the next line. The tag itself is simply called BR, which stands for break. It's one of the few exceptions to the rule of, uh, of having opening and closing tags. There is no closing break tag, only an opening tag. Now, as HTML advances, uh, we're currently on our fifth version of HTML, HTML5. We've seen line break change a little bit in recent history, in recent past. Sometimes the line break tag will look like this with a slash at the end, and or sometimes even with a space slash at the end. Um, this is called escaping the tag. Anytime you have an HTML tag where there is no closing tag, Many times you'll see a slash at the very end of it, on the far right edge, right before the closing bracket. This is very common for HTML4, and you can still do that today, but it's not required of HTML5. A simple BR is sufficient. Um, so I, I just want to show you that in case you're ever looking at something online and you see a bunch of BR tags where it's BR space slash bracket, it does the exact same thing as this, and this is actually the HTML5 standard, just BR. Let's save our work there and go look at that in a browser again. We can go back to the browser and refresh it, and now I can see that I've got line breaks in there. I can see line breaks. If you want additional line breaks, you can have as many of those as you want. So for example, if I pop in four line breaks here, I can save that, look at that in my browser, and now I've got four line breaks between this and this. Now there's obviously other ways we can deal with spacing online, uh, but this is one very common way to give ourselves some basic text formatting. Now, as I said before, spaces and, uh, and the enter key typically don't matter. So if you don't like the way this looks, if you'd like to space each one of these line breaks out just so you can kind of see that these are four tags here so they're not all jumbled up, that's fine. If you would rather put each one on its own line, 
That's also fine. The browsers interpret all of these the same way. As you get more advanced in code, it's typically more common for us to see more and more code on the same line, like so. Four line breaks in a row on one line. Now line breaks will work for some instances, but maybe not all. Now for the next sample, I'm going to go out and grab some fake text. Um, I'm going to go out to my favorite browser and I'm going to go to a website called Lipsum.com L-I-P-S-U-M.com Lipsum is actually short for Lorem Ipsum, which is essentially dummy text. Okay, Lorem, or Lipsum.com is a great Lorem Ipsum generator. Um, you can scroll down just a little bit and on the bottom right you'll see a Generate Lorem Ipsum uh, button. Lorem Ipsum is not actually any text at all. A lot of people call it Greek text, a lot of people say it looks Latin, but it's actually just dummy text. There are large words, there are small words, there's punctuation, there's commas. Um, there's all sorts of, of real looking text so that it flows like a real paragraph. There are some other Lorem Ipsum generators out there that, that don't provide real high quality uh, dummy text. Sometimes they, they think it's kind of funny to throw in a cuss word in the middle of that or something. So be careful when you're looking for Lorem Ipsum because sometimes uh, you'll put some dummy text out there and, and go show your client and they'll say, hey, what is there? Why is, what is this in the middle of the paragraph? So Lipsum.com is a good one. I'm just going to copy two or three paragraphs here and I'm going to go back to my code and I'm actually going to paste them in underneath all this other code that we already have. So now I've got several paragraphs there. Now I could put a couple of line breaks after every paragraph, but there's another tag I want to teach you today, and that is actually the paragraph tag. It looks like this. There's an opening P, P for paragraph, at the beginning of each paragraph, and a closing P at the end of each paragraph. Again, you can put this on its own line if you want, or you can just drop it right there at the end of the paragraph after the period. But by putting in a paragraph tag, an opening P and a closing P after the paragraph, it does two things for us. Uh, first of all, it gives us what's the equivalent of two line breaks. So when we look at that in our browser, go back to my tab here, here is my first paragraph, and it's got sort of like two line breaks above it and below it. Now my, I see a second paragraph here, and this is actually the second and third. Uh, the third looks like it begins with the word integer, uh, which is right there. So ideally I should have another paragraph that involves this section. When I go look at my code here, uh, I can see that the one paragraph tag is, is really taking care of line breaks both above and below. That's the first benefit of a paragraph tag. The second benefit is one we won't see today, uh, but it's that we can provide formatting to our paragraph. If you would like to change the font, the color, the font size, uh, the alignment, the justification, all of that can be done to a paragraph. You can't really format a line break. A line break is just space, so you can't really tell a line break a, a look. Uh, so if you want to change fonts and colors and, and layout, a paragraph tag is a much, much easier way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a paragraph tag around all three of my paragraphs. And then I'll go save this momentarily and look at this in my browser to see what the difference is. So I'll save it. I'll go back to Chrome. I'll refresh it. And now I can see that I've got one two, three paragraphs. The paragraph tag is the better choice of the two, especially if you're dealing with real paragraphs, with real content. Both of these tags, both the line break and the paragraph, provide spacing, but only the paragraph tag provides formatting, which we'll see later.